What's up guys and welcome back to Overkill Gaming, your home for high-end gaming, whether it's PC, PS5, or handheld, we got you covered. I hope you guys are all doing well out there, enjoying your new Steam Decks. I've been getting a lot of messages from people who are telling me that they've just gotten their Steam Decks and they're really enjoying them. So I'm happy and I'm excited for you guys. And we are doing our best to show you how to get the most out of your Steam Decks. So that's why this channel exists. Well, part of the reason why this channel exists is to help you get the most out of your Steam Deck. Now, for those of you who only own a Steam Deck or the Steam Deck is your only gaming device, we have provided a few options to help you get more out of your Steam Deck. For example, we've shown two different methods of dual booting your Steam Deck with SteamOS and Windows 10. And we've shown two different methods of setting up controller support for games outside of Steam. For those who own a Steam Deck and a gaming PC, we have shown how to convert your gaming PC into a cloud streaming server to play all of your favorite games with minimal impact on your Steam Deck, whether at home or outside of your home. Not only that, but you can also use this method to run Windows on the Steam Deck within SteamOS without a dual boot by remotely accessing the PC that you already have. And today we're gonna be shifting our focus to those who own a Steam Deck and a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5. We'll be showing you how to turn your PS5 into a cloud streaming server so that you can play your entire PlayStation library on the Steam Deck, taking advantage of the raw power of the PS5 and the amazing games that are only available for play on a PlayStation console, games like Ghost of Tsushima, for example. And you'll be able to do this with minimal impact on the Steam Deck. And we're gonna go over what I mean by minimal impact. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you do, be sure to leave a like on the video and also consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Lots of great content on this channel for the Steam Deck. We also cover PC and PS5 as well. You definitely don't wanna miss out on any of it. So what do I mean by minimal impact on the Steam Deck? By minimal impact, I mean being able to play your favorite games with 60 FPS, ray tracing, high ultra settings, higher resolution, all while enjoying a five hour battery life, saving storage space on the Steam Deck, lower temperatures and lower fan noise. All of this results in a much better gaming experience while also prolonging the life of the Steam Deck. You really can't go wrong with this and it makes absolute perfect sense to use this with online games like Call of Duty, Fortnite, Overwatch 2, and the like, because online games already require an internet connection to play. So if you are a Steam Deck owner who also has a gaming PC and or a PlayStation 5, it just makes perfect sense to leverage the power of that hardware on your Steam Deck. Some of you may remember when I uploaded a video showing Cyberpunk 2077 1.6 update running on the Steam Deck using a blend of low and medium settings. The video was recorded on one of the hottest days in the summer with outdoor temperatures exceeding 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you remember in that video, the Steam Deck was reaching upwards of 100 degrees Celsius trying to run Cyberpunk and our FPS range was mid thirties with a 40 FPS cap. Now it's a good rule of thumb to try and avoid temps above 90 degrees to prevent overheating. Also with the fan having to work so hard to keep the system cool, you really can't expect more than an hour of battery life. Now take a look at this same game running on the Steam Deck streaming from the PS5 with better graphics, better frame rate, temperatures in the mid fifties and hardly any fan noise. And then tell me, in what world would it make sense for a Steam Deck owner who also owns a gaming PC or a PS5 to play this game locally on the Steam Deck when you can leverage the power of a PC or a next-gen console? But there are those who have asked, well, if I'm at home and I'm playing across my Wi-Fi and streaming it from my PC or PS5, why wouldn't I just play on my PC or PS5? Now, if you are someone who has a gaming PC or a PS5 and you only purchase the Steam Deck to play games when you leave the house and you never play your Steam Deck while you're at home, then this is a valid question. 
I can see where you're coming from. But if you're like me and you bought the Steam Deck to have the option of playing games anywhere, whether inside of your home or outside of your home, then this is a great option to help you do that. I have a dedicated game room in my house where I usually go to play video games. I call it the war room. I have two gaming PCs and a PS5 in that room. There are times where I want to play games in another part of the house, perhaps downstairs or on my patio or while I'm laying in bed. I was sick with COVID for two weeks and laid in the bed playing games on my Steam Deck. Back then I wasn't using this option so I was limited to playing only those games that I had locally stored on my Steam Deck and I had to have it plugged in if I wanted to play longer than an hour and a half to two hours. I think I've made it clear why I believe that this is a much superior way of gaming on the Steam Deck. It has become my primary way to play on the Steam Deck and playing games locally stored on the Steam Deck is more of a backup way of playing on the Steam Deck. It's a way that I play if I don't have the option of remotely connecting to my, to my PC or my PS5. So now let's talk about Chiaki. What is Chiaki? Chiaki is an app that allows you to remotely connect your Steam Deck to your PS5. If you have a dual booted Steam Deck with Windows installed, you can also do this using the official PlayStation Remote Play app. Both Chiaki and PS Remote Play app have their pros and cons. In regards to Chiaki, the pros are that you can use this in SteamOS. There is no dual boot required. It also has full controller support right out of the box. The con is that out of the box, it only works on Wi-Fi on your local network. However, I have come across a method that people are using to be able to establish a remote connection to the PS5 outside of their local network using port forwarding. This is something that has to be set up in the router itself. We will not be covering how to do that in this video, but we will leave a link to a Reddit post with detailed instructions on how to do this for those who want to give it a try. The other con is that it takes a little more effort to set up in SteamOS compared to the official PS Remote Play app, which is a simple matter of downloading and installing the app and registering your PS5. The pro of using the official PlayStation app is the ease of setup and it works right out of the box outside of your home network. No requirement to set up port forwarding in the router. The con is that it requires a dual booted Steam Deck and just like on a regular PC, it requires that you use an actual PlayStation controller. So no support for the built-in Steam Deck controller. All right, so now we'll go over how to set this all up. First, we're gonna go to desktop mode in SteamOS. We're gonna go to discover and we're gonna search for an app called Chiaki. Here it is right here. We'll go ahead and click on install. And once it's done, done installing, We'll launch it and then we have to provide it with certain information. There's a website here that makes it very easy to find your PlayStation account ID. I'll include that link down in the description. And then once we have our account ID, we're just going to plug it in right here where it says PSN account ID. And then we head on over to our PS5. We got to go into the settings and once we're in the settings, we want to go down to system and we want to head on down to remote play, make sure enabled remote play is enabled. And then we want to go to link device. It's going to give us an eight digit code. We're going to take that eight digit code, plug it in where it says pin. And once we have entered that in the eight digit code, we are ready to register our PS five. And then we just click okay. And now our PS5 is registered, but before we move forward, I want to go over the settings here. So resolution wise, I have my resolution at 720p, but I have bumped up the bit rate to around 40,000. The codec, I have it set to H265, which is for PS5, 264 if you're using a PS4. So that's also important. Audio buffer, I have bumped up to 19,200 and also the decode method is VAAPI and this is to get rid of the visual distortions and the crackling. Normally, if you leave it at default settings, you may encounter some visual distortions and crackling. 
and I tried these settings and this is what helped get rid of it for me. So you'll definitely want to change that. So the last thing we need to do is add Chiaki as a non steam game. And we just click on steam, go to add game, add non steam game, click on Chiaki. And now we have Chiaki added to steam as a non steam game and we can head back to gaming mode. All right, so here we are back in gaming mode. We're ready to go ahead and launch Chiaki. Click on play. And you'll see our PS5 is here. It shows the state as ready. You're gonna wait, wanna make sure that your PS5 is in sleep mode or is powered on in order to be accessed. And once again, just as a reminder, unless you set up port forwarding in your router, you will only be able to access this on your local Wi-Fi, but there is a way to access this outside of your local network. So you're not limited. You just got to set up port forwarding in your router. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video and also consider subscribing. Lots of great tutorials here on this channel for the Steam Deck. Definitely don't want to miss out on any of it. We're out of here, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.